we are going to have some fun. We're going to look at some uh, aspects of STLP. We're going to talk about some things that maybe you didn't know for folks that are familiar with STLP. We're going to talk a little bit about the basics of what STLP is and how it can benefit you in your school. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. And if you let me know if everyone can see my first slide, anybody? Th awesome. Thank you, George. Appreciate that. So, and of course, guys, if, if there's any questions, any comments, any thoughts, uh, please use that chat window because the, here's how I roll. If you've been in any sessions with me, you know that my, my slide deck is just almost a, a way to rein in my thoughts. We've got lots of, of different things that we can be talking about. We might go off on a little bit of a tangent. I want you to lead us through what is helpful for you. So if you have a question at any point, post it in the chat, raise your hand, use any of the cool features, um, and we will make sure that we incorporate all the questions that you have into this morning's session. So first things first, we are going to look at uh, the top five reasons why STLP is right for your school. I thought about different ways that we could, that we could uh, title this. Some things like maybe uh, the top five ways that people are going to think you're the smartest educator in your building because you participate in STLP, uh, top five ways that you are uh, having the greatest impact on students' lives because you embrace STLP. Um, we could have went with AKA why STLP rocks, but any way we look at it, you're gonna get five of my top reasons why I think you bringing STLP into your school is the right thing to do. And I'm gonna see if I can try and convince you of that today. So if we have not had the opportunity to meet yet in my many travels around uh, Kentucky as uh, uh, the STLP chief enthusiast, which by the way, uh, I, that is a, a self-inflicted title there. I don't know if I'm allowed to just make up titles at KDE, but I went ahead and, and uh, gave myself that title. So my name is Jeff Sabalski, and I do have the honor and privilege of serving as a member of the digital learning team at the in the Office of Education Technology at the Kentucky Department of Education. And I do have a primary focus on STLP. And so we have to stop and I, I always have to preface everything that I have the best job ever. You might think you got the best job. You absolutely do not have the best job because you don't have my job. I get to be, for lack of a better uh, I get to be the fun uncle that rolls into town, sees the cool things that you're doing with your kids using technology, gets to shine a big bright spotlight on that to make sure everyone else in the state can know what's going on. And then I get to bust it out of there before bus duty or lunch duty. So yeah, I got the best job. And anyone else on my team that wants to say that they have the best job, they don't, they don't know what they're talking about. So Laura, Ben, if you're out there, no, sorry, it's right here. You know it and I know it. And we'll take a step back and we'll just say, okay, let's ask this question. We're going to pose this question. What is STLP? So I'm looking through the, the list of our participants this morning. I recognize several names of folks who have been uh, STLP coaches for quite a while. Some folks who, uh, some names I recognize from social media that I don't think have been involved in STLP and a whole lot of folks that are new names to me. So this is an exciting exciting day because I love being able to introduce folks to SCLP. We're going to challenge you to think about it in a way that is, might be a little bit different than what you're used to. A lot of folks have heard the letters STLP. A lot of folks maybe are familiar with it. You know that it was, it's a club and it's so-and-so down the hall has always done it. Um, I'm going to challenge you to look at it from a different perspective and the first thing we'll do is we'll just, let's do that, the closet, the classic definition, right? So STLP is actually the Student Technology Leadership Program. Um, my own kids still think it's Student Technology Learning, which I think is great, and maybe we should update it to learning, but the Student Technology Leadership Program, we are uh, a program under the Kentucky Department of Education. As a matter of fact, STLP is the largest student facing um, program that KDE puts on for the Commonwealth. Uh, we are uniquely Kentucky. 
we have a lot of folks who think about STLP. Well, we're, you know, I hear folks say we're going to nationals or we're going to go compete in the national. Well, there is no other STLP in the country. Others have looked at us and tried to emulate what we've done and we've embraced that and we have wholeheartedly packaged up everything that we have and said, let's help other states and our peers try to make STLP happen in their state, but they all kind of drop the ball and realize that it is a very difficult thing to do unless you have the unique set of circumstances that we have in place here in Kentucky to help make STLP be a thing. So for right now, it is STLP Kentucky, and there is only STLP Kentucky. We, I work honestly with different uh, uh, folks in different states and other Department of Eds um, and try to help them launch STLP because frankly, if we could get STLP to become a national program, little side note, then we could get a career pathway, which is a whole other conversation. Um, but for now, STLP is still just unique to Kentucky, which is perfect. Because I bet maybe you didn't know, and here's one of the first little times I'm going to try and blow your mind today, but did you know that Kentucky is the national leader in education technology? Yeah, you, you heard that right, the national leader in education technology. So if we, if we could go back to the start of the, I mean, I want to say it out loud, but the pandemic, and look at how Kentucky uh, was uniquely prepared to deal with the, the uh, overnight virtually transition to digital learning, um, to digital remote learning versus how other states did. So we know from our perspective, there was a whole lot of hot messes and car wrecks and train wrecks and things that went pretty good. And we learned along the way. And then after a few months, we, we got it, the hang of it. And then we started thinking about what if we did this? And pretty soon as a state in general, we transitioned into the use of technology as a platform for learning um, much faster than other states did. And for the growing pains that we went through, they were nothing in comparison to what some of our other states have done. And the reason why we were in such great space and ready for basically being pandemic proof was because of the Kentucky Education Technology System, KETS. So of course we're, we're hosted by KET today. KETS is a little bit different. Uh, out of CARA back in 1990 uh, came the Kentucky Education Technology System, which was essentially a plan to get computers and technology into every school in the state. So that was 1992 was, the, was when KETS started. And in earnest, we started this program to start connecting all of our schools and getting these newfangled computers into classrooms. And then around 1994, they had the bright idea of, wait a minute, we're, we're putting all this investment into technology. How do we know if it's even impacting students? And so the idea of the Student Technology Leadership Program was launched all the way back in 1994 as a way to showcase how students were using the technology investment that the state was making into every school. So here's a little, uh, I bet you didn't know this, which state in the country was the very first all the way back in 1995 to have every school district and school connected to high speed internet. If you said Kentucky, you are correct. That's right. So there's something you probably didn't know about us. When we hear folks talk about, oh, we have to get internet to these poor schools in the country. No, we have had high speed internet and we're, we're talking like literally like, you know, high speed since 1995. Um, and so that is just one of the many ways that the KET system has really poised the state of Kentucky from, uh, and I should add to that, you know, over the years, the focus on district technology leaders being at the table for decision-making and promoting digital learning coaches, whether that used to be when we used to be called technology resource teachers all the way up until today, but recognizing that people side of technology as being valuable, being prepared for uh, the eventuality where we have greater than a one-to-one -one ratio of students to computing devices, 
all of that led up to us being ready for the pandemic. And frankly, STLP was perfectly poised and we didn't skip a beat. Uh, we transitioned to an all digital STLP year. We did the entirety of all last year of STLP digitally, like a lot of folks did things. Um, but honestly, for our students, the quality of work didn't suffer. And I think you're going to get a chance to see some of that work today. So if you want to check out just for your own sake, if you're interested in, in learning a little bit more about how technology has become uh, such a leadership point for Kentucky, there's a link here and you I've got the link to this slide deck. It's actually a PDF and all of the links that are in the slides that you're seeing today are clickable and actionable. So you can jump out and take a look at that catch timeline and see a bunch of the cool things that we have got going on over the years. Um, so where does that leave us from, from 1994 up until recently, STLP as a program um, can claim 751 participating schools in 139 school districts uh, and over 60,000 actively participating students, uh, which means a little bit in the sense that we have, let me share this next one with you. We've had double digit percentage participation growth year after year since 2013 in STLP across the state. That's crazy. So from 2013, every year we have, we have had massive growth in who participates. Every year I'm ready for the bubble to burst. Every year I'm ready for, to have to report back to my boss, oh, this is our first year that we've had a, had a decrease in students participating. So far, knock on wood, STLP continues to grow. And then we have to, we, we, we have to stop and think, why is this happening? Why does it continue to happen? Why do we continue to see growth? And the answer starts with that question of what is STLP? For many of us, we think of STLP as a club, right? And after school activity, we pick five or six kids who will come after school, maybe a dozen, and they stick around once a month. And we look at uh, using robots, or maybe we think about a project that we're going to participate in. Um, that is the old way of thinking. What happened in 2013 is we began thinking this way, that STLP is your whole school, that you have an entire school of students who are participating in the learning process using digital tools. Because of those digital tools, what you're going to find is those students are really already doing STLP things. And when folks realize that, wait a minute, we can take advantage if we want to, quote, participate in STLP events, which, by the way, we'll look at a little bit more deeply. But there are uh, there is a, a competitive side to this STLP, which is, to be frank, a little bit of smoke and mirrors for to to sort of hide the fact that students are learning. Uh, and but we make a fun uh, event out of things where students can compete and they submit digital products and submit uh, updates about projects and ideas for projects. And then we pick a winner at the end of the year, quote, winner. Everyone's technically a winner, but we do uh, use that competitive aspect to garner some excitement out of students in the learning process. The reality is that when folks realize, wait, I don't have to make STLP things for STLP specifically, I can actually look at my entire school and find ways to participate using what we've got, then we saw that participation start to explode, which meant more students were getting to have the experience, which meant more students were learning with technology, which meant from 2013 until the pandemic hit, we were basically getting our kids prepared to learn using digital tools. Fantastic. So that's a brief wrap wrap up what's STLP, how do we get here? We'll dive into uh, you know much more deeply into things, but now I just wanna hit you with the top five. And that first one that's gonna come at you is number five. And the number five reason that STLP is a perfect fit for your school is because STLP is standards-based. So that is, what that means is, Every 
activity, every competition, every category, whatever word we want to use for it, every area of STLP is tied back now to the Kentucky Academic Standards for Technology, which, if you aren't familiar, the uh, KAR 8090 uh, put the Kentucky Academic Standards for Technology into a requirement for every K through 12 student. Those standards have existed for a long time. However, they were very out of date. And over the last several years, a, a wonderful team of folks, of educational leaders and instructional leaders have worked with folks on my team, uh, Ms. Laura Raganos and, and Marty Park, Dr. Marty Park, and worked together to to rewrite the Kentucky Academic Standards for Technology. And as of this coming school year, as of 21-22, those standards are to be taught at all grade levels. Right, so they're out there. So you can check on the link here. You can always just visit kystandards.org and you can get a copy of those academic standards. They're pretty, they're pretty awesome the way that the team wrote them. They wrote them from a, a student-centered perspective, and they put a lot of effort into making it usable in the classroom and helpful to uh, uh, every grade level because these are not um, standards that are assessed necessarily, right? These are not standards that you go to technology class and you learn the standards, like you might learn social studies standards, math standards, English standards. The Kentucky Academic Standards for Technology are embedded in any curriculum at any uh, um, um, content area and are taught from, from kindergarten through 12th grade. We have always wrapped STLP around standards, but because of this new introduction, we have gone a step further and really made it be STLP language as well. So what I'm gonna show you here on the screen now are the updated versions of our popular STLP standards posters. So what we've done is we have taken those technology standards, uh, the empowered learner and written it in a way that it is more student friendly than what you might get if you threw a document with 50 some pages at students and said, okay, here's what we're gonna learn. So we were very excited. Oh, thanks, Mary, appreciate that. Uh, we're, we're pumped to be able to start rolling these out and get these out to folks to help people um, envision how the standards can be meaningful, uh, especially through STLP. There are, I think seven standards right now, knowledge constructor, innovative designer, digital citizen, empowered learner, creative communicator, computational thinker, and of course, global collaborator. Now, what you'll see when you dig into these, yeah, these will be absolutely, uh, Lauren, these will be available as, as, a, as a PDF. And actually, I'm gonna show you where you can get them here in, in a few minutes because these are actually printable as poster size. They are scalable up to uh, two by three, uh, 24 by 36 poster size. They are available in thumbnail and they all tie directly to the performance indicator progression chart that you see on the screen here. So as you dig into these, you will know as the teacher, when we are doing STLP, we are teaching the standards, period. Now, what we're really going to be excited about is to know that all of the rubrics for every STLP event or category are being realigned to match directly with the standards. So for folks that have done the STLP projects, for example, if you've ever done STLP projects, you've come to regionals, uh, you know that there has always been a component of self-assessment for students. We've called it self-reflection in the past, but that self-assessment now includes how do they believe that they have addressed being an innovative designer, being a knowledge constructor. And on top of that, 
what we're really, and these aren't, I'm going to preface this because I'm excited to share them, but they're not quite over the finish line right this second. We're going to need a couple more weeks to get through a few levels at KDF, folks looking at it and saying this makes sense. But now they are also going to be tiered by grade division. So now the project rubric for K through five projects will have different language that speaks directly through K through five students, the same for six through eight, and the same through for nine through 12. So the students are going to own their learning. And more importantly, they're going to tell you how they have hit the empowered learner standards. What are the action items? What are the areas that they have used in their projects? And the beauty of this is as a teacher now, the next step is I can essentially check off, okay, I've hit this standard, I've hit this standard, and I know I've hit this standard because not only have I seen it using the STLP rubric, but also my students have self-assessed and described how they believe they have hit these standards. Now for the, for the students, do they need to know about the performance indicator progression chart? Do they need to get into that multi 50 plus page uh, standards document? Heck no. But these posters potentially hanging up in your classroom in the hallway could be great news for you. Get it muted. So we are, okay, so time out. If you thought that the standards posters were pretty cool, wait until you see this resource. If you have sat in on any sessions with digital learning coaches, if you are a digital learning coach, if you sat in on sessions um, with, oh, Jennifer, I'm gonna have all those links for you here just in a little bit. So everyone's gonna be able to get a hold of those posters and anything in this presentation, you'll notice that I do have a link to a PDF of the presentation, which will take you directly out to get a hold of those. And I will make sure that everyone is that's highlighted. But this is what's super exciting. Yeah, the, the technology standards dashboard from the brilliant minds of Laura Raganos and Ben Maynard, who I am lucky to be on a team with at the, in the digital learning team at KDE, have come up with this interactive tech standards dashboard. I could spend the rest of our time digging through this. I, there are other sessions, I think Laura even presented on this uh, on Wednesday. But you can go to this, this site, and I would recommend using Google Chrome as your browser when you get there. It is all browser-based. And you're going to be able to select grade band, content area, what concept, whether it's digital citizenship, empowered learner, et cetera. And then it is actually going to give you student samples, vetted student samples that you can use as a launch pad to understand a little bit about how some folks around the state are addressing the technology standards by looking at how what kids are actually making and doing now i would to be you know honest as laura and ben were working on this i think that a great deal of the stlp uh, state fi finalists from 2021 you will find them in here. As a matter of fact, if this was, I'm, I'm not going to jump out because I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. I want to, I want to show this to you, but I'm telling you, we could spend the whole day in here. Jump out, take a look at this. There's a link right here and I'll put that link in the, uh, let's see if I can get that link for you, but we'll put it in the chat as well. So you can jump out and take a look at that. But I don't want you to go in there right now. Stay with me, stick around. I know you want to go in there. I'm telling you, the very first link you see right there, it says 3.5 video under computational thinker, STLP product. Next one, website, STLP product. Next one, video, STLP product. All this is doing is reaffirming that what we're doing with STLP is curriculum and standards-based. It is more than a club, more than a club, okay? All right, we'll come back to the standards. Uh, Dashboard, make sure you get links to that here in a moment. And let me see here. Where are we? We are here. Okay, so good. Let's jump ahead to reason number four, that STLP is resource rich. 
Why should you bring STLP to your school? Because it is resource rich, meaning you have access to several layers of support materials. Your students have access to it. Everything is available to everyone all the time. There are no hidden secrets. And if you choose to be a competitor, if you choose to come and participate in an STLP event and bring students to compete, there's no mystery. They know exactly what judges are gonna look at. Their rubrics are posted well in advance. Uh, they'll be posted all by August 1st for the rest of the year. And there's, it's all there with rubrics, with links to resources that can be helpful to you. One of the first places to start is probably the most overlooked resource for STLP, and that is the STLP website. So much time and effort has gone into finding a spot for all of the information that you would need to do virtually anything in the STLP world. But it also is a, is a location where you can jump off to grab resources, to grab links, to grab rubrics, to grab websites, to grab, to jump out to tech standards. It's all there. Jump on it and enjoy it, right? It's there. It is, it's pretty fun to look at. It works well. It scales to a smartphone. It scales to a tablet. It scales to a Chromebook. It looks good. Um, we have put a lot of effort over the years and literally it's taken years to get it to a point where it is fully accessible. Um, it's there ready for you to jump into. Now, I will preface all that with right now is the updating season for the STLP website. Since May, it has been a flurry of updates here and updates there. We always preface it by saying it is a work in progress over the summer. By August 1, updates will be fully completed. So that gives me another two weeks to get a couple uh, last minute things up there, but jump in there. And we have even tried to make it easier for you. We have done some little DNS magic. And if you can't remember stlp.education.ky.gov, maybe you can remember stlp.rocks. And that takes you straight to the website. Another resource that you can jump into that everyone really will rely on is the STLP super sheet. So we knew the website was great. It looks wonderful, but it is a lot of information. It sometimes you just are like, I know what I'm looking for. I don't have time to go and try and figure out which menu to step. Okay, let me just go to the super sheet. Now the super sheet is essentially everything STLP on one spreadsheet. We tried to organize it by activities. We try to put the most recent activities at the top of the spreadsheet. You'll see that we kind of move that around. So once regionals is our next step, and that'll be at the top of our spreadsheet, but you can jump in and access all the rubrics, all the links, all the resources with, with essentially a basic uh, detail about what, it's, what this activity is, who can do it, what grade levels it's designed for, is it team, is it individual, and also link out, I think I already said, to the rubrics and take a look at everything start to finish, as well as it's where your go-to spot where you can jump and get to uh, registration pages, where you can go back and jump out to information pages about different events. So that super sheet is available and, and is going to be like I say, of course, it's being updated right now, but it is going to be something that as a school leader, you're going to want to take advantage of. The next resource is, and we're only on number four right now, the next resource you have to understand is we also have a side benefit from going all digital during the pandemic. That is that because we went all digital for all categories, we have every student presentation. We're in years before where we were face to face, it was fantastic. It's a different level of competition and it's a different level of experience for students. However, all of that, those presentations were, were sort of a moment in time experience that went away after the day was over. Now we have not just the 2021 STLP state championship, but also the 2020 STLP at home state championship all of those student products, projects, presentations are all on the web. 
So now when you're like, I don't understand exactly what they mean by X when it comes to the project rubric, you can jump out and actually watch the presentations and see the materials provided by our champion teams from last year. And not just our champions, but also all the finalists. So folks made it to state over the last two years, a wealth of opportunity to go back and dig in and see some of the best of the best, but also really focusing in on those state champions and seeing everything that they have done. And then of course, we will always continue to provide you with new and updated resources. Something that we're working on right now and we're excited and happy to collaborate with the folks from Beachwood. And we have some different uh, opportunities here to take advantage of some work that they have been doing that uh, Ben Lusk and Monica Wainscott have been doing with their real world challenge builder. What I'm saying is, is we're always going to make sure that you have something that you can use to reflect back on to build with students. My goal as that chief enthusiast for STLP is to remember what it was like being that classroom teacher back in 2001 and doing K-TIP and coaching this and trying to every night was, you know, if you remember your K-TIP year, I don't know about yours, Vine was literally every night was survival. What on earth am I going to do tomorrow? And then on top of it, I got to be the STLP coach. Well, I didn't even know what STLP meant. Um, so it's important to me now in the role that I'm in to make sure that participating in STLP is as seamless for the STLP coach, for the STLP, um, for the teacher level folks who are, who are leading the charge, and so everything I can do for you to make it easier is going to be that. So, Linda, great question. What is the real world challenge builder? Now, there is a link there on that presentation. This is a, and I, I've got several links, and I think I maybe even need to update that link. I'll double check that for you. But the real world challenge builder, at one point, um, Ben and Monica, Monica is a digital learning coach in Beechwood and I've mentioned before that I'm on, on the team with Laura Raganos, who leads our digital learning coaches around the state. And in a, a session that they had, Monica and Ben presented their real world challenge builder. In Beachwood Independent, they are focused on project-based learning. And they essentially did a presentation that laid out exactly how they moved from envisioning with students what a project could be all the way through the execution of that project with reflection and how to coordinate with, co with collaborators in and outside of their school building. And it is amazing and it is packed with actual, with actual real samples that you can use in the classroom. So if you are a teacher, or a STLP coach, and you want to jump into an STLP project, what I found was the real world challenge builder that they've used for something completely different uh, has a perfect, near perfect fit with STLP. And so with their permission, we have posted this because it is fantastic. There's another, I just saw, as a matter of fact, last night, as I was going through the slide deck, I saw another video that they had posted that I need to, to put a link in here, because this is a trend, trend, a transformative tool here that we could take advantage of. Because I know a lot of times we're spent with how do I, where do I even start with projects with kids? I don't even know where to start. The real world challenge builder um, will take you through that every step of the way. Now, granted, it is built for Beachwood Independent and their curriculum uh, plans and their innovative curriculum plans, but it is a great fit for STLP. So, boom. We're excited about it. Through the fall, I'm going to be pushing out with this a little bit. Ben and Monica have been working on some adjustments to make it even a little, well, I don't know if they've, we've been working on talking about how we could make some adjustments to make it even more STLP friendly, but it's a great resource. And as new resources pop up, we're going to make sure that they are available to you. And that last, last resource that I want to talk about is the support that you get. Um, yes. Jamie, uh, as a matter of fact, I feel like they maybe even reference the guided inquiry in their presentation. 
but we need to dig into that and you'll see. I, I think what you'll see is that if you, once you jump into the real world challenge builder, yeah, there's going to be things that are a little bit, maybe they don't fit that you can carve out. You're going to customize it for, for yourself, but it is definitely a user friendly. I know. So my wife is actually a library media specialist and an administrator um, curriculum be mad at me for not remembering her title. She's basically the assistant principal for curriculum and instruction at a at a uh, A5 alternative school. And so uh, the reason I even mentioned that is that this is the kind of thing where they she spent days in a training session learning about project based learning to get some sort of certification. And now uh, the real world challenge builder is the kind of thing that is you can do it yourself. You can kind of not saying this is good as the PBL training they had for three days, but uh, I'm telling you, this will really get you off the ground. Now that that support from the statewide STLP coach network, I want to hit on that. What you see here are a couple of charts from we every year we we there's no cost to participate in STLP, and the only really price of admission is we ask folks to fill out a form so that we can recognize that your STLP is active in your school. And through there, we asked a couple of questions, but some information that we get, uh, for example, is what's your STLP coordinator coach experience? We can see that almost 70% of our STLP coaches are coming back. So we have a large group of folks with knowledge built up that they share freely through the coaching network. And we can also see that 60% of our STLP coaches identify as classroom teachers. But really interesting there is you see that 25.4% are library and media specialists, which uh, the Castle Summer Refresher was earlier this week. And I know there's a lot of ongoing work with, with Castle and our library and media specialists. We could have a whole other session about how STLP is a wonderful fit for your library. Um, but just know that there are tons of people out there ready to support you, ready to lend a hand for folks that are brand new, ready to answer questions. A couple place, places you can get in on that, that network is join, subscribe to the KYSTLP, maybe it's STLP KY listserv, KYSTLP listserv, you'll see the link there. And then of course, follow the STLP uh, Kentucky Twitter page uh, and social media. Twitter, we're technically we're on Instagram, Facebook, whatnot tech, but really we only kind of are active on Twitter right now, but it's a great way to connect with other folks, get question, questions answered, um, to pose questions, to give ideas. It's a great spot. So number three, here we go. Number three, STLP is for every student. The number three reason, because it is for every student. Now, what does that mean? That means that there is something for every student. STLP is designed to have a home for every type of student. Because remember, STLP is your whole school. So the days of rejecting kids that are interested in STLP, those have by and far kind of waned. Um, because we have seen that idea that it doesn't have to be a few kids that you work with only after school because STLP fits so well into the classroom, especially now that everyone will be teaching technology standards, right? If you want a really great reason, a great example of why STLP is really for every student, I'd invite you to jump out to listen to this episode of the Hey Mike, Hey Bob DLC podcast. Uh, Mike and Bob are two uh, just awesome gentlemen who are digital learning coaches in Floyd County. I didn't, I don't know if they're actually in the session right now on the call. Uh, this is not a paid advertisement, but Mike and Bob, Mike uh, Bell is actually one of the gentlemen. And he is a legend in STLP world. He had back to back to back STLP state champion project teams, which is unheard of. Um, truly unprecedented because he understood what STLP could be for students in his school. All that we've talked about of STLP being your whole school, STLP being for every student, fitting into the classroom, 
being cross-curricular. Mike got it. And a lot of what we're talking about today is because he was a case study for how you could take the advice that we're giving and put it into action and actually see results. So if you jump out to their podcast, there's a link here. Um, and I think the image links, but this particular episode of their podcast, we had, like I mentioned before, we had our digital STLP state championship. Uh, typically we'd be at Rupp arena with 14,000, uh, folks celebrating students using technology to learn. But this year we did our award ceremony, uh, live online like this right here. And in Floyd County, where Mike and Bob are now the digital learning coaches for the district, and Mike leads STLP district-wide in Floyd County, they actually pulled all the kids together that were participating and had a watch party at one location, of course, socially distanced and everything, but they brought the kids together, popcorn, cake, the whole thing, and they watched the award ceremony live, just like if they had been in Rupp Arena in the seats watching us announce it from the stage. The reason why I put this here is why is STLP for every student? Because if you listen to this podcast, it's pretty short. This episode is not very long, but you hear from students, grade school students, high school students, principal. Uh, I, I think you hear from their, at that time, superintendent. And independently during their interviews on this podcast, they explain why it's for every student in different ways. Uh, Essentially, someone says, you know, not every kid is an athlete and they want to be part of a team. And someone says, well, everyone is using technology to create and make things. And we just use STLP as a way to shine a bright light on it. So all of those students have a spot in STLP. Um, listen to their podcast. The guys are hilarious. Uh, I, I think it's fantastic. I listen to them when I'm riding the bike. It's awesome. They're a big plug for the Hey Mike, Hey Bob uh, podcast. But also, I won't play this for you right now because I want to keep zipping through our last things. But if you get a chance, watch this reaction video. This will explain why every kid needs to, needs to be given an opportunity to participate in STLP. This is the 2020 elementary K through five state champions. They actually recorded them as the announcements were made. They didn't know if they were going to win or not. These students from uh, Jefferson County won. Their reactions are priceless. It's a YouTube video. That will help you understand why this opportunity needs to be available for as many kids as possible. Number two reason, because you can personalize STLP to fit your school. Why does it work at your school? Because it can be whatever your school needs it to be. Unlike other student organizations with a strict handbook and, and dress code. And, I mean, that stuff is fantastic and it's great and it works well for other organizations. What we want STLP to be is a resource for your school, for your students to learn. And so therefore we know that it has to fit your school individually. So what that means is, is we're now kind of looking at things from a, the STLP maturity scale. And so not an indication of good or bad in any way, shape or form, but the idea that sort of that entry point of STLP might still be it's small groups of students with very targeted interests. And maybe the student is interested only in programming and needs a place to have uh, a place to express themselves. Uh, maybe it still is the after school club format. Maybe it's only in certain grade levels. Maybe that entry point STLP is just entering one or two categories, maybe not even coming to regionals. Maybe you're not even competing and you're just looking at the resources online. And typically in those situations, there's one leader in one building uh, who acts as the STLP coach, the STLP coordinator, and is the point person for every STLP activity with those small groups of students. That's great. We recognize that that is a valuable role. It's a great starting point, and you should never feel any regret or guilt about being at that level with your STLP. Eventually, we hope that folks will get to the STLP plus level, uh, where we are talking about really integrating with cohort-based, cross-curricular, project-based learning concepts, embracing it as a school culture. There actually is a case study, we won't jump into it, in Fayette County, 
where a school quite literally took the STLP framework and redid their entire school day around the notion of preparing projects. So it was a PBL concept and they used the STLP hook um, to, as a foundation to make sure that students were prepared um, for STLP things. So you'll see there's a maturity scale, but you can make STLP be whatever you need it to be for your school, for your students. And my job is to help support you make that be successful. I want to, again, so another fantastic resource, uh, Laura and Ben, uh, earlier I mentioned with the tech standards dashboard, they also have launched for this fall, uh, the coaching plus platform where they are helping digital learning coaches, administrators, classroom teachers take their digital coaching to the next level. Um, all of this is linked on, on the slide deck. This is a great video. I don't think it's going to, well, I'm not going to play it because we're, I'm going to let you do it. I don't want to mess with the audio and try to get the sound to work and everything. But what this is, was a highlight. When we talk about STLP plus being that peak concept of STLP, what we're talking about is a prime example in Simpson County at Simpson County Elementary School with uh, Sam Northern as the STLP coach there. Many of you know him uh, through Castle and several other ways that he is a leader in our state, library media specialist leader, digital learning leader. Um, he truly got his school from the principal to the vice principal to the custodial staff, to the bus drivers, to embrace STLP as a school-wide project. The project that their, their school worked on and then submitted was selected as the state champion for K through five last year uh, in 2021, just a few months ago. And this video has an interview with principal and everyone explaining how they fitted into. I knew we weren't going to get to watch it, but I wanted to make sure you had a link to it because once you follow this link, you'll also be able to go down that rabbit hole with the coaching plus resources, which could be its own session. And maybe that's what Laura talked about on Monday. Now, number one reason that you should be doing STLP in your school is you're probably already doing it. Okay. You probably are already doing it. You probably have got stuff already going on. Then it hit me one day when Kelly Bachman sent out this tweet. Uh, she had been in a session and then she, her mind was kind of blown because as we talked about several of the different categories with STLP, she realized, wait a minute, these are things my students are already doing. And it was, yes, that is a yes moment. You're probably already doing it. Your students are making things with digital tools all the time. Now that the digital, uh, the technology standards are out there, they're going to be creating digital products that could easily just be incorporated into STLP. Now, this one is something you really got to hone in on. What we see here is KAR 704, KAR 3, blah, 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 blah. This is the minimum graduation requirements um, for the state of Kentucky. And I'm going to zoom in here on this one, the underline, the demonstrate competency in technology. There is now a graduation requirement that every student in Kentucky demonstrates competency in technology prior to graduation. Now, how could you possibly, what platform could exist that you could take advantage of to do that? Well, how about STLP? Uh, here's a really brilliant quote that looks like I said something to a newspaper, but I didn't, I just wrote this up. But bottom line is STLP is, is perfect for student portfolios to demonstrate competency in technology. It provides you opportunities for students to share what they know, to get feedback using the STLP resources, the rubrics from the super sheet, our technology post, our standards posters. Students can participate in STLP, but also be defending their technology competency for graduation all at the same time. Jefferson County, uh, Folks from Jefferson County, your backpack for success skills. We work with Heather and Russ in the technology office to streamline how STLP fits into those. Here are some great examples, and you can jump out and see these examples of what students were already doing for their classes. They submitted as STLP. Here's our state champion documentary. Here is an infographic that Chloe was doing for one of her classes. Here is a screen capture tutorial champion for translating websites into Spanish. 
Here is a original photo champion because Lizzie C liked to take photos and the STOP coordinator just took advantage of that and submitted it. So the point is you don't have to do something special for STLP. You're probably already doing it. Last but not least, launching STLP is super easy because you can go to our website, stlpeducation.ky.gov slash launch, and we take you through step-by-step. Step. Here's how to get started in your school. Here are some resources to get you off the ground, and here are some tools to get students involved and to figure out Maybe my school isn't going to come to a competition. Maybe we're just going to look at the rubrics this year, or maybe we're going to go in, jump in with both feet. So take advantage of the website. Of course, um, I'll stick around. There's time for some questions. Uh, yeah, and so, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's a great point, Cynthia. Sam is presenting, uh, I think he's Monday, maybe, or maybe it's this afternoon, but he's got some great stuff. If you got a chance, jump in there. Sam Northern from Simpson County, the STLP champion coach. Um, if you have questions, please pose them to me, send them to me. Here is again, all of my contact information. Listen, I am here to help you. My job is to support you through this journey. So if you are thinking about starting with STLP and these five reasons have helped push you over the edge, awesome. Reach out to me. We'll make time for, we can work together. Uh, I can work with you remotely. I can work with you if I am available in person. We can get this going because I believe that this is the most worthwhile uh, endeavor that we can take with, with students right now to help them have a place to show what they know, to shine in the spotlight, and to wrap the concepts of STLP around your whole school. So thank you, everybody. I'll look back through the chat to see if there's any questions that I can answer. But guys, please jump out there. Uh, the bit.ly is bit.ly, S-T-L-P-K-E-T-M-D-21. You can get this presentation. Um, and again, remember, a few of those links are still updating because we're in that update season right now. But please jump out there, get what you need, come back, talk to me, and I'd be really excited to see. Follow me on Twitter. Follow us uh, on Twitter. By all means, it's a great uh, PLC for us in Kentucky is that Twitter. I know it's a little, I don't want to get into Twitter sometimes, but jump in there. I Trust me, this is going to be a great investment of your time and energy. Thank you.